Hello, my name is Taryn Packer and I'm a Applications Engineer here at GoEngineer. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about simulation, specifically how to apply orthotropic materials to your static linear simulations. As you can see here, I've got a piece of wood which is almost by nef definition orthotropic. I've got it set up in a cantilever type fashion where I have a fixture on the back here and a force load along that top edge. So the first thing I need to do to change the material type from its current material to orthotropic material is come up here to the part feature in the simulation feature tree. Right click it, go to apply edit material. You'll see I've already got this orthotropic wood custom material down here at the bottom. It's already set to linear elastic isotropic by default, but there is another option here. If you click this down arrow, you'll see there's a linear elastic orthotropic material option. So with isotropic, all of these properties, elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, are the exact same for the x, y, and z direction. But with orthotropic, if I switch to that, you'll notice that the elastic modulus and the Poisson's ratio switch to have six categories instead of just two. Uh, elastic modulus in the x, y, and z directions, and Poisson's ratio in the x, y, y, z, and x, z directions. So orthotropic materials have different material properties in the different planes and axes of the, its three-dimensional space. You'll notice that there's some red here and some black. There's even some blue values down here. The red means that it's absolutely essential for the study type that you're currently in. The blue means that it's optional for the study type that you're currently in, depending on what you're doing. And the black means it's usually not necessary at all. So you'll notice that I have values already put in here for the elastic modulus, Poisson ratio, mass density, and yield strength of this wood plank. Normally, when you're doing a orthotropic study type, you'll have to come in here and put these values in individually. You may ask, how am I supposed to find these values? Well, the best way I've found to get these values is to contact the manufacturer that makes the material in real life in the first place. These values are all found out through experimentation, and it's the manufacturer's job to do that experimentation and to provide that information to their customers. So just go ahead and ask the manufacturer that gave you the material in the first place, and they should provide you with these values so that you can input them here in simulation. So once these values are put in, the next thing we need to do is create a reference geometry. Basically, the program doesn't know automatically which direction X, Y, and Z are in. So you need to tell it which direction they're in with orthotropic materials. With isotropic materials, it's not necessary because all the directions are the same. That's why there's no blue box here. But with orthotropic material, we do need to specify that. You can put planes or coordinate systems in here. So if I wanted to put the front plane in there, that's perfectly fine. And basically what that's saying is it's going to use this global coordinate system as the coordinate system for the x, y, and z axes. But let's say I don't want to use the global coordinate system. I want to use a coordinate system that I specify. So to do that, I'm going to clear this box here. I'm going to get out of my materials database here and come over to my model tab. Here I need to apply a, a new coordinate system. So I'm going to go to Features. Under Reference Geometry, I can click on the down arrow, click Coordinate System, and now I need to pick a point where I want that coordinate system to be. So let's just pick this point here at the edge of the board. You'll notice that my new coordinate system is the exact same as the global coordinate system, but I don't want it to be. I want it to be different. To make it different, I can click on whatever axis I want to change, click on an edge, and that axis goes to that edge. If I wanted it to be going the opposite direction, all I need to do is click this little box here, and it reverses direction. So now my new coordinate system is going a different direction than my global coordinate system. You can do the, with, the same with the y and the x axes. So I'll press OK to that. Now I have a new coordinate system feature here. If 
I come back to my orthotropic simulation, go back into my materials, all I need to do is click on the reference geometry blue box here, go to my coordinate system, feature tree, click on that. Now my new coordinate system has been applied to this simulation. And I can press apply and close. And that's how we apply the orthotropic material to our model. The last thing we need to do is just run this. Now we have results and we can go into post-processing and analyze these results and uh, get some data from them. This has been Taryn Packer. I hope you've enjoyed this video.